Let's move on to the next segment. Before I do, obviously, if you're on YouTube or podcast services around the world, let us know what you guys think about anything we've talked about down below. Let's move on, though. Before I do, make sure to check out patreon.com backslash most file podcast. That is where you can help support the channel. $10 tier. You can be on a podcast with us and talk about whatever it is you want to talk about. $5 tier. You can suggest a topic to the podcast as low as a dollar. You get to join in our Discord server. Awesome community. We do live along game watches for NBA, NFL, WWE. We're all across the board, and it's a cool community that's basically like one big text group on the Discord app. So go ahead and check that out. Link down below in the description. But, Brandon, 11 through 20, let's get through my draft before we talk about We're not going through every pick like we did the top 10, but we've got a couple of things Because we've got to be able to... Get to bed tonight. Yeah, that too. <laughs> um, the Jets at 11, I got them going. Tristan Wirfs, offensive tackle from Iowa. Raiders going CeeDee Lamb, wide receiver, Oklahoma. The Colts at 13 go Javon Kinlaw, the defensive tackle from South Carolina. The Buccaneers go Yader, Ghost, uh, Yader Gross Matos, the edge rusher from Penn State. Gertner. Gertner <laughs> from 15. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> At 15, the Broncos go at Grant Delpit, the safety from LSU. Um, Falcons at 16 go Curtis Weaver, edge rusher from Boise State. Cowboys at 17, uh, Kristen Fulton, cornerback from LSU. Then the Dolphins via the Steelers at 18 going with Alex Leatherwood, offensive lineman from Alabama. Raiders via the Bears at 19 go Trevon Diggs, cornerback from Alabama. Two Bama boys going back-to-back. Jaguars at 20, end things out for this one. Via the Rams going C.J. Henderson, cornerback from Florida. We're going to start this one off with the Bucks and the Colts to kind of end our quarterback discussion. And what it comes down to is we talked about earlier, same thing basically we talked about with the Panthers, what we're going to talk about here. We talked about the Giants being the team that's like, hey, Doors are open. Who wants a quarterback? We're open for business with the fourth overall pick. Should the Colts or the Buccaneers be calling teams to move up for a quarterback? Buccaneers, it looks like they're going to move on from Jameis Winston. Colts are maybe in the running for a quarterback because of how Jacoby Brissett looked at the end of (coughs) this past year. What do you think? Well, one simple thing with the with the Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. The current quarterback that you have for the Buccaneers threw 30 touchdowns and 30 interceptions in the same season. And this guy proceeded to say, yeah, I felt like I was balling. You are I just, dumb. I just got to stop turning over the you ball. You are dumb. So not Sean only that same thing up on super fans. Not only do you not have a quarterback who's good, oh. you have a quarterback who's dumb. So that is not going to help you on or off the field. I, I, I think that it's time to move on from the Jameis Winston project. At least he sounded better than, what was it, 2013? So, Jameis, what do you say to your team at halftime? Well, you know, I just went in there and I said, you balling? I'm balling. You got this? I got this. Remember that? That crappy interview with Tom Rinaldi after they won the national I can't remember, but I'm trying to remember what he was doing. Can we get that win? <laughs> yeah. We eating W's. He's basically like, I looked at my teammate and I said, you got this? I got this. We got to go back to play Florida State football. And I just looked at him and I said, you ready? I'm ready. Because if you ready, we ready. We win the game. And it's like, what the hell are you talking about? Okay. I feel like I've gotten stupider by listening to you talk. It's a whole Billy Madison situation. Um, but I think the Buccaneers should be the team. Like, the Colts, to me, go for Tom Brady. Don't trade up for a quarterback. Go go try to get Tom Brady. He's probably, like, the Colts are probably the only team in my mind. Will they get Tom Brady? No, because Giselle does not want to relocate the family to Indianapolis. How many times I have to hear that through experts? I'm just going to blow my minds out, but I'm going to say it regardless. Here's the reason why I think the Colts don't trade up for a quarterback. This right here. Cha-ching, cha-ching. Do you want to know how much cap room the Colts are going to have this offseason to work with? What do they get? $96.4 million. Not bad. 
It's a lot. They have the most cap room out of any team in the NFL. Here's the other thing. The Buccaneers have 91.7. They have the third most cap room. Who's the second? The Dolphins. Hmm. They have 94. Point two million dollars in cap room to work with. All three of those teams in the running for Tom Brady, except for the Buccaneers. Um, the Bucks should be the team I think that trades up for a quarterback. Yeah, but because, but but what is wrong with Bruce Arians, where he continues to not just move on from Jameis Winston? <laughs> I think, I think he said they are. Like I didn't how, hear that. I don't. I'd love to tell have you tell me where it is because I didn't hear that. And he continues to be like, yeah, I, you know, I stand by my quarterback, and you know, Jameis is our guy. And it's like, you know, you can stop lying. No one thinks he's your guy. I mean, it's it it's was, crazy. So, it was the day after they lost. The exact quote. Oh, I'm looking it up here. Okay, I think this is what it is. Um. Okay. When asked Monday, this was the Monday right after that Week 17 loss, when asked Monday if he believes the Bucks could win with another quarterback, Arians responded, another quarterback? Oh, yeah. If we can win with this one, we oh, can yeah. definitely yes, yes, win that's right. with another one. That is one. right. That we're is going, right. We're going to have this defense. That, to me, that's was right. like, hey, Jameis, you're gone. We can win with another quarterback. Oh, uh, bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, you're uh, right. Bye-bye. I for- completely forgot about you're that, but that's right. He did say that. He did say that. Yeah. So, like, to me, that was the writing on the lo- wall of, like, thank you, Jesus. I don't have to defend this man anymore. The season is over. But doesn't that doesn't that say something, though, when, again, you threw 30 touchdowns? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. 30 you threw 30 interceptions. interceptions, and you did it in the same season. But he was balling. <laughs> but, but how are you so – you have no self-awareness – that you just were awful mm-hmm. all season, but you think you did well because you threw thirty touchdowns. How dumb are you? I mean, I don't Brandon, get it, Brandon. Brandon, this is coming from the same man who went into a school and talked to little kids, boys and girls, and said, "I want all the boys to stand up." You can be anything you want. And basically, yeah, yeah. And everyone after hearing this was like, but what about all the what about all the girls? Oh, they can't be anything? No, don't stand up. You can't be anything. Like, this is the reason why when we were talking about the draft, now I know my horse in the race, Marcus Mariota, not doing much better. So I'm not going to say. Hey, that. he got a couple of plays in that he did. playoff game. He won a playoff game. He completed a pass to himself and won a playoff game. Something that Jameis Winston does not know what the playoffs feel like. But for me, this is why I hated Jameis Winston. Coming, not just because of the personal you, issues. You didn't too. like him because he stole those crap legs. Well, <laughs> this, you didn't like him because of that. He stole some other things I didn't like either. Mm-hmm. But we're not going to talk mm-hmm. about that on this yep. podcast. But Oh, thing, hi, Baylor. <laughs> the thing that I did not like about Jameis Winston, and it was evident in his personal life and in his interviews, is that I'm not going to go as far as Dave. Dave has said about... Marquise Chris in the NFL or NBA, he said things like, "Dude is dumber than a box of bo- or dumber than a box of bricks or dumber than bricks on defense." I'm not going to insult Jameis Winston that bad, even though I, he's not far from that in my mind. But it's just like his personal awareness in interviews and different things. Like I said, that school appearance, like. He makes poor decisions in everyday life. It doesn't surprise me that he makes poor decisions on the football field. Like, and that's what you're dealing with here. A guy who does not know how to make the right decisions. Like I mentioned on Superfans, I felt sorry for uh, Byron Leftwich. Because every time Jameis would throw an interception, the camera would go to Byron Leftwich and the announcer would have to basically talk up Byron Leftwich. Like, hey, it's not his fault that Jameis sucks. Like, Byron Leftwich is doing a really good job. He's working with Jameis and doing this. And it's like, okay, you don't need to sugarcoat it. We know Jameis sucks. We know that it's not Byron Leftwich's fault. He's doing a great job as the OC. And he's got nothing to work with. 
that's why to me the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if they if it's either of these two teams to move up for a quarterback, it's got to be them. It's got to be them because they can't trot out Jameis Winston again. They can't do it. They can't re-sign him, and I don't think they do. If anything, they re-sign. I heard, like, Teddy Bridgewater could be on the front of their contract, which I'll ask you this. If neither of these teams get Tom Brady, should the Bucks and the Colts, because they have the top, they're in the top three of salary cap, should they go the free agent route for a quarterback like a Teddy Bridgewater over the draft where they would probably have to trade up for it unless they're going to reach in a sense to get like a Jake Fromm or a Jalen Hurts? Because most people only have three quarterbacks in the first round. Well, um, maybe not Jake Fromm, but I think Jalen Hurts would be a lot better than Jameis Winston. Okay. I mean, now name the free agent quarterbacks, the uh, ones that are of any significance. Here, let's pull that up. So we're going to have quick. what? Philip Rivers, Tom uh, Brady. Cam Newton, Tom Brady. Cam Newton would have to be traded for. Okay. Yeah. Um, Cam Newton, he's not right, though. He's Cam, not right. His his yeah. shoulder Cam is still New- not right. Cam Newton and Andy Dalton would have to be traded for. So the top free agents, and this is based off of their salary, their salary from this past year. Drew Brees is number one, but I'm assuming he goes back to New Orleans. Yeah. Tom Brady's number one, then. 43-year-old Tom Brady. So that's when we talked about, let's say they don't get him. After that, it's Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers, Teddy Bridgewater. Then it drops. Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota, Chase Daniel, Case Keenum, Chad Henney, okay. Drew Stanton. I've heard all I need. Colt, Colt McCoy, Nate Sudfeld, A.J. McCarron. Ryan Tannehill will probably be back with oh, yeah. the Titans for sure. But like I've already mentioned, it takes a – like after Teddy Bridgewater, it takes a drop. So really you're looking at Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers, or Teddy Bridgewater. Um, I would take those guys over Jameis Winston. Whether – oh, so for the – would you I would do take the, the same for the Colts? Okay, here's the thing though is that – there were too many good games this year that Jacoby Brissett had. So you where think people we're looked giving at him. up on Jacoby? I think too we soon. are. Okay. I think we are. I don't know if you're <laughs> in that same boat with I, me, but I think we are. I was a little. I, I, think, I was a little shocked when people were like, "Oh, well, the Colts could be looking for a quarterback," and I was like, "But they traded for Jacoby." I mean, I understand if you're going to get Tom Brady to come. J- Jacoby Brissett, and and they locked him up to like a three year, I thought forty eight million dollar deal or something like that in the off season after locked. Andrew Luck was uh, retired and said he wasn't going to be coming back. Maybe that's too high of a number that um, I'm saying, but they have not. So they did. They I, I could have sworn they locked him up to something. Okay. I'm going to have to look on SpotRack because SpotRack does not have – usually SpotRack would have upcoming contracts. Um, he's got – so it's not a full-blown contract. What they did was they added the year. Oh. So he's got – That's he not was, how they made it sound. He was making two mil in 2019. He's now going to be making six million plus the $5.5 million signing bonus. Um, he'll be an unrestricted free agent after 2020. No, at two. Hold on, because Colts got a, hand, uh, Colts hand, Jacoby Brissett, two year, thirty million dollar contract. Yes, twenty. That those two years were 2019 and 2020. Okay. Yeah. So he'll be an unrestricted free agent after this year. It's pretty good money. So, so this past year was year one of that deal. Twenty million guaranteed money. Well, mm-hmm. they needed him, but I, so what I. What I would say to that is I, I really don't think that they should give up on Jacoby Brissett that, that quickly because mm-hmm. he wasn't that bad. Yeah. He was injured a little bit. Uh, Marlon Mack got injured. T.Y. Hilton was injured um, for a good part of the season. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I think that the, the defense at, at, at times played pretty well, um, but mm-hmm. they also lost to Jameis Winston. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that... Uh, it's not good when you're losing to Jameis It's Winston. not. It's not. They had three interceptions, but they still lost to him. Mm-hmm. So 
I don't think that it's time to give up on Brissett yet, though. I don't. So let's move on to we got two other teams I want to hit before we go into our last segment. The Jets at 11. They're an interesting one to me because they they could go anywhere. They've got – they could use an edge rusher. They can use a cornerback. Their most important need is probably an offensive line, which I have them going with because it's like you got Sam Darnold. Protect Sam Darnold. Like – and looking at the record of Sam Darnold post mono, they had a winning record when Sam Darnold came back from his mono injury. If you're the Jets, because in my mock, Wirfs Wirfs is the top offensive tackle from Iowa. They could easily grab a Gross Matus from Penn State. There's numerous cornerbacks there. And we're going to talk about them later, possibly, like, running back could be another position they look at, could look at later. I don't know if you're going to take a Jonathan Taylor at 11. That might be a little bit too high for Jonathan Taylor. If you're the Jets, what are you looking at? Because for me, it's clear. Protect Sam Darnold. Protect him. Get him going. But also, if, like, Robbie Anderson doesn't resign then you could be looking at a wide receiver there. If, if, if Robbie Anderson doesn't resign, you go wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, because one of the biggest things, too, I think last year with Darnold, before there was any uh, Le'Veon Bell, it was get this guy some weapons. Yeah. Because But at the end of last season, as opposed— one, How about that one game where Darnold would throw it, receiver dropped it, and I was like, could you please catch it? I need fantasy points. <laughs> But I'm not even talking this year. I'm yeah. talking last season yep. where the where around. the Jets ended. Yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I'm still thinking of this year. Is this this? Yeah. Bit. But yeah, two years ago, the Jets ended on kind of a higher note for them, where mm-hmm. it seemed like okay, things are looking up, and the only and things were looking up with Darnold. He was playing some of his best football that he had played in his first year, and the the the, the whole thing uh, among reporters, analysts. Pe- people close to the team was if you can just get this guy some weapons he is going to be good Mm -hmm. so now you bring in Le'Veon Bell that has been awful it's been bad Le'Veon Bell has not been good Mm -hmm. and no it's not the same situation with the Steelers by any means but I think we all thought with Pittsburgh Le'Veon Bell while a great situation he was still Le'Veon Bell, and he's going to be good. Well, this year, he was just a shell of him, his former self. I mean, mm-hmm. he was not good. Yeah. Neither were the Jets. But now it's, okay, there's talent there. You have a, a running back. You have a very good running back. You have Robbie Anderson, who for some reason I think showed up around maybe week six this year, wasn't there for the first couple of weeks on the field, but not really there. Um, you've got Jamison Crowder, uh, Ryan Griffin, t- uh, you know, t- uh, turned up to be a-, a good tight end for, uh, for, for Darnold. So if Robbie Anderson stays, you go with the offensive, uh, with the offensive line, um, with the, Help to yeah. Darnold and the, and the help and the help to to Le'Veon Bell because part of it he had no no running lanes. Robbie Anderson only had seven hundred and seventy nine receiving yards this year. Only had fifty two receptions on night. Here's the thing: fifty two receptions on ninety six targets. Jamison Crowder eight hundred and thirty three yards, seventy eight receptions on a hundred and twenty two targets. So either the targets are bad or you got the drop skis, which I know from one game this year you had the fucking drop skis because I watched it because I started Darnold in that game. That's why to me it's like I oh, I feel like this could be one where what's going to be more – I feel like defense is going to take a back seat because their defense isn't the problem. It's going to be what's more important to Sam Darnold. It's kind of the chicken before the egg argument. Of or what came first, the chicken or the egg? What's more important to Darnold? Making sure he's protected and is standing upright so he's not seeing ghosts. So that he's like the Ghostbusters back there. I ain't afraid to know ghosts. Um or to get him a weapon so that he can 
have someone to throw the ball to. I agree with you. If Robbie Anderson leaves, that makes this a lot easier because it's like, okay, we need to fill that hole. Mm -hmm. They could do that in free agency, though, too. Like, they could get, like, even if, like, let's say Randall Cobb leaves the Giants, they are not the Giants, the Cowboys. They could go ahead and throw a contract at, like, a Randall Cobb type player, is what I'm talking about. That veteran that's not going to break the bank like Amari Cooper, not going to break the bank like an A.J. Green, but can still be someone that Sam Darnold can rely on? Or do you go with a rookie and just say, hey, you're going to grow with this guy? I know this is your third year in the league, but. We drafted a young wide receiver so you can grow with him. I almost feel like, to me, I'd rather keep him upright, though, to where if I'm looking for a wide receiver, if uh, Robbie Anderson leaves, I'm doing that during the draft. Ra- or I'm doing that during free agency let it, rather than the draft because I need to protect him. Or you could say the other way around, let's look for the offensive linemen because it's easier to – have an older offensive lineman who knows the game and doesn't need to um, mature like a rookie would. So, I mean, to me, offense for sure is what the Jets are going to go with. And speaking of wide receiver, the Cowboys. Should they target a wide? I don't have them going with a wide receiver with my pick. I have them going with cornerback. Should the Cowboys be looking at a wide receiver, though, at pick 17? With me, Jerry Judy's off the board, uh, CeeDee Lamb's off the board. The top wide receiver for them on my mock would have been T. Higgins. Is that the right move for the Cowboys, or should they go with something else and not worry about their wide receiver position? So uh, with the Cowboys, they... On the offensive side, you look at the fact that is Amari Cooper going to be there? I mean, the hope is that he is, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got a new contract coming for Dak. You supposedly have a new contract coming for Cooper. And if not, and if Dak doesn't get a new contract, he's getting franchise tagged for sure. Absolutely. So he will be on this team one way or another. But my question would be, Amari Cooper. Mm-hmm. And the reason I bring this up is there's there's a growing thought in my head mm-hmm. that maybe he doesn't end up in Dallas. And part of it is because of the game that I th- – when, when, when was it? Was it the game – it was watching something. I can't remember which game it was, if it was week 17 mm-hmm. or if it was in the – uh, in in a, a bridge to some other game that they that we were watching, but I'll look it up. It was with um. Did he have like no targets or something or like? No, ridiculous? it was it was something that uh, Troy Aikman had said. Mm-hmm. The fact that you don't have your best player out there on the field. It was it was we in week seventeen where Troy Aikman said, you know, that uh, Michael Gallup felt really mm-hmm. bad. And, and, and apologized to his teammates for not making that last second catch. Okay. Troy Aikman said, okay, but Amari Cooper is supposed to be your best wide receiver on, on your team. And he wasn't on the field on the very last play for the Dallas Cowboys. He wasn't on the field. This is supposedly... Was it the Philly game that they lost? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that was so, week 16. So that was 16, yeah. but Aikman was talking about it in 17 when yeah. they were playing against the Redskins. He was mm-hmm. talking with Buck about it. Because they and needed he, to win that Philly game just to have a shot at the yes. division. Yeah. Yes. Or they needed Philly to lose to the Giants the next week and, the, and yeah. then win. Obviously, that didn't yeah. happen. But he was saying this in the, in the Redskins game and saying that, you know, there has been some, you know, talk or – Stuff that Amari Cooper, maybe the reason why they're rotating him in and out is because, you know, he's not playing as hard or, you know, things like that. And I'm thinking, okay, the minute I heard that, my thought was, that's not good. Out of your number one wide receiver and the guy who is set to make lots of money, are you going to spend money on a guy who's not on the field all the time when they're healthy? Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty crazy to me that, again, last play of the game and Amari Cooper is standing on the sidelines. Now, it's different if you said, okay, he's not healthy. 
this is hurting him or this is hurting him. But even still, in a game like that, if you're a real big wide receiver, if you're a playmaker, if you're a competitor, doesn't matter if you're hurting, you're out there. But he wasn't. And that's mm-hmm. where I'm thinking, Amari Cooper may not be back on this team, and Dallas may very well be looking at a wide receiver to replace him. Well, and the reason why I also brought it up, and maybe you're thinking, well, Ricky, then why didn't you have them draft a wide receiver is because one of one of their biggest need is cornerback. We're question mark about Dak. Like I said, he'll be on the team one way or another. They've also got Amari Cooper and they got Byron Jones that are going to be some of the biggest pending free agents. And like NFL.com has on their team needs page, and it's so true. They say Amari Cooper and Byron Jones are the team's most notable pending free agents. But the list for Dallas is long. And on long, they put that in all caps. So it's like, no, no, that list is long. And wide receiver, I was thinking about it for the discussion for today because not only is Amari Cooper a free agent, Randall Cobb's a free agent, Tavon Austin's a free agent. So right now, the only wide receiver that you have under contract that made a difference for you this year is the guy on your fantasy team, Michael Gallup. He's the only one right now. Michael Gallup, though, he could be a number one mm-hmm. wide receiver. Yeah, but he, I mean, he show, he, uh, he's not Amari Cooper, mm-hmm. but he showed himself to be a playmaker mm-hmm. when they needed him pretty much throughout the season, even mm-hmm. more so in the second half of the season. So uh, what... It's better than having Tavon Austin as the only guy that you've got under contract and because the, then you'd have to go out and sign, uh, try and sign Cooper, mm-hmm. um, Cobb. Cobb, and or mm-hmm. uh, Gallup. So yeah. having Gallup under contract is a good thing for them. And that's why I'm kind of <laughs> feeling like maybe wide receiver could be something they go with because if they don't bring back Cooper, they don't bring back Cobb, they don't bring back one or two of these guys – you got to supplement that somehow. And also, they've got 81 million, around 81 million, that's going to be um, free cap room. They're fifth right now for the offseason. Another thing, though, is when you got to pay Amari Cooper, when you got to pay Byron Jones, Dak Prescott's most important because if they franchise tag him rather than giving him a contract, odds are contract or free or franchise tag. Odds are he's going to be about 20 mil in cap hit. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you're franchise tagging him, I think that the franchise tag would put him <clears throat> at a $27 million cap hit. So, like, what, if if I'm doing my math, that's about, what, 50, that would be like 54. You go from $81 million to Is that to what the 54. franchise tag is now, $27 so, million? Dollars? How the franchise tag works, and for quarterbacks, it's outrageous because they take the top five salaries of the position and they average it. Well, so because the, it's gotten so big. Yep. Yeah. So it's the top five quarterback contracts, and it's the average of those contracts. So for a quarterback, you're really paying up for that one year. But if it's like a kicker, you can franchise tag a kicker because it's like they're not getting paid as mm-hmm. much as those quarterbacks. So, I mean, that's why for, I think I read today that the franchise tag would be pretty close to $27 million for them, which would be ridiculous. It's like Dak's a guy where it's like, why the hell haven't you locked it down I know. and gotten him a contract? Ricky, my question to you is, mm-hmm. do you think that Amari Cooper comes back to the Cowboys? <sighs> no, only because I feel like they get Dak a contract. I feel like they get Dak a contract, and then after that, they gotta pay other people. I think they they get Dak and Byron Jones contracts before Amari Cooper and Amari Cooper walks. Where do you think that he would go? What where do you think would be the most ideal landing spot? And then where do you think that he would go? I'm looking at teams that have cap room. The Raiders would be an interesting spot for me. Only because He the, was just there. Uh, no, I know. <laughs> but like it's a team where Maybe it doesn't happen. I, I say intriguing because they need a wide receiver. Like Indianapolis, they've got bigger fish to fry. They're going after Tom Brady, not Amari Cooper. Um, I don't see him going to Miami, and I'm going right down the teams that have the mm-hmm. most cap. The Buccaneers, 
they've got Godwin and <clears throat> they've got Godwin and Mike Evans. They don't need to add another guy like Amari Cooper into that. Go get your quarterback. Go get your other um, things lined up with your money. Bills could be interesting. I mean, look at their wide receivers. What their top guy is John Brown. What, John Brown and Cole Beasley. So like maybe maybe the Bills say fuck it. We're gonna go get Josh Allen. A weapon like Amari Cooper. But then at that point, you're just becoming the Cowboys of the AFC East. Really the Cowboys of the AFC. Because you took Cole Beasley from them. Now you're taking Amari Cooper from the Cowboys. Um, I do, do you think Amari Cooper would make the jump, stay in the division, and go to the Giants? Would he do that? Do you think he would do that? Hey, if he got... Because they got... They've got, what... $69.4 million in cap room? Hey, you know, I think if they've got the money, he's getting his mm-hmm. payday and he's going to go someplace and, and you know, be that guy. I mean, he could be that guy in Dallas, but the thing I do, like I said, mm-hmm. I worry about is there was a lot of that towards the end of the season. Now, I know he yeah. had some injuries, but there was a lot of that rotating in. Why? You don't see people rotating in for mm-hmm. Michael Thomas. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike, come off, come off the field. He'd be like, the hell are you talking about? Mm-hmm. That doesn't happen on those guys. Yeah. It shouldn't happen on those guys. Mm-hmm. But yet with Amari Cooper, oh, we're rotating him in. Now, mm-hmm. was that a Jason Garrett yeah. and the head coaching and the coaching staff decision? Or what was that? But that mm-hmm. that that was that's weird. I mean, that 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 is not normal that you're doing that with your supposed best wide receiver. Because if I even go down the list, like the Raiders, although he was just there, need a wide receiver. And if they're going to swallow their pride, hey, let's have a reunion in Las Vegas. Seattle could use him. The Cardinals, the Jets, even looking down the list, the Bengals, who are at 16 with $51 million. Like, and this is 15, after 15, I kind of lose it because then it goes to league average and everything gets smaller. But. I would put my money on if he's not in if he's not in Dallas, I'm gonna say he's in a Buffalo Bills uniform. I think they go out and pay for him because out of the teams that need wide receivers, they've got the most. They've got the most money to offer at him. And after this playoff series, I don't need to see Josh Allen try to win it with his legs. Let's get him someone to throw the damn ball to. Mm-hmm. Um because we got fucking Singletary in the backfield and old man Gore. Um, holding it down. We just need Josh Allen, someone to sling that ball to. Let him let him comp by it. Throw 70 yards to Amari Cooper through the air um, for some touchdowns. But...